Okay, let's have a look at how we can use a bit of uh, uh, constraint modeling um, and some of the history based parametric design. Uh, in popping on the side of a, a tower are some, um, some cladding panels. Um, okay, so let's just begin by, by drawing a, or modeling a, a, a rough outline of, of, of what we want to achieve. So I'm just going to place a line there, hit reset, um, place another line here up to that floor, then another line again. Uh, and start at the bottom here again, snap to the same sort of location on that one, that one, and then do the same at the uh, the top here. So you just draw a line, then one more down to say here, one a bit further to there, same again on this side, same again over here. Now what we'll do here is is pop in some. Um, some arcs. These are going to be very rough to begin with, and we'll we'll tangent those up when we start using our constraints. Um, so just for now, we'll have them. Oh, we'll go this way for this one. Uh, we'll have them kind of looking like this. Okay, and um, just to finish that off, what we'll do is we'll create a a um, grouped object. Okay, now what we can do is start fixing our uh, or constraining our objects into place. So first thing I want to do is constrain um, the top and the bottom. So starting with this little floor marker, I'm going to constrain that end and that end because I'm going to link off these guys and I never want these to move and we never want the top and, and bottom to deviate. So those two are constrained in place. And the next constraint I'm going to make on that one is making the top line and the bottom line coincident. Then I will put a perpendicular constraint with the top and the bottom on here and on here and same again at the top on here and on here and then on here and on here. We might, we might find later on we need to apply a few other constraints as we go. Okay, and then we'll just uh, constrain up these lines here, so they will always be parallel. Same with the ones above. Okay, and then we can pop in our tangential constraints, so this will constrain up our, up our curves. Just like so. So now we have these constraints all in place. And uh, just one final one, what we could do is, is create some variables. So we could create a, uh, a variable called base width. And we can create one called top width. And we can use the distance constraint here and we can constrain that to there. Oop. Better better do it on one that um, is at the top there. That'll do. We'll pop it there. And let's make it a, a value that, like 15 meters, for example. Okay. And we'll do the same with base. We'll better put in a value first. We'll say 20, 20 meters. And we can constrain the top and the bottom. There we go. Okay. So now with all the, these constraints in place, it means we have the ability to, to, to refine our curves. So if we wanted to, say, take this one here, we could refine that curve in that direction. Let's say we wanted to adjust the top and bottom width. We can do that by saying uh, the top width could be eight meters, and the bottom could be, say, 25. Okay.
So we might just give the top a little bit, a little bit more width. Okay. Yeah, all right, so we can push this around a bit. Um, we can move the whole lot over as well. Okay, we can refine these curves. Okay, and we could add other constraints should we want to fix <clears throat> fix things in into place. So from there, we could actually have a look at then creating um, a bit more of a 3D object out of this. So using our variables, we might uh, add in another variable and call it width. And for starters, we might pop in a value of say 500. And we could go to our solids and we could say extrude. So we'll give it uh, a bit of an extrusion. What we can do in the in the distance, um, we can choose our width variable, and we can select the object and click. And you know, if we want to change that, we just adjust the variable thickness here. We might say a thousand, and that will change the thickness there. And of course, we can still then adjust uh, our um, our constraints in here. So if I click on this widget here, then I have all the constraints available to me. So if I pull, say, this one up, then the whole object will, will change and we maintain those tangential curves. So again, I'll click on the widget and we may just do some more refinement here. We can pull that down, say, like that. Cool. Now let's say we wanted to break this uh, object down into uh, multiple pieces um, or even add some um, fillets and cuts into the side of the object as well. So let's have a look at, at how we might do that. Um, we might place a, an object down here, say something like that. That's just a shape. Um, that we can move and change. Then what we might do is use the sweep edge option. We can select the, the, the edge that we want to cut. We're on mode cut here. We can use the um, that shape and it places a, a nice little cut up the, uh, the side there. For separating out the um, or for dividing these into floor panels. Again, we might do the same thing. We might pop a little, little shape in here, just like that, uh, and keep it quite tight for the moment. Again, I could constrain this up as well. I could, I could put some dimensions on that if I wanted to. And what we might do is use the cut option. Um, we'll say, well, let's select our object, select the shape, and click. And what we have in, in there is, um, is a little cut through there. And then we can use the um, array tool to array that feature. So we might say um, rectangular. We might say, put on design Y for a moment. We'll say col rows one, columns, uh, we'll put in 28, I think, for the moment. Uh, row spacing can be a zero and column spacing, well we had the floors at, at four meters and we might make that a minus so it heads in a downward direction. We can click on, on this and you can see it's, it's doing that anyway. We might need 29 to be precise. There we go and Right, we can cut that, that through there like that. Okay, so uh, what that means then, again, if I click on the object, I should have my widgets there, which means I can go around and, 
and refine the, the curve even further. And in 3D, that will parametrically update. Okay, so um, see, so yeah, just to have a, a good view of that, Control Shift will bring up our navigation wheel. If I say walk through model, it will give me some perspective. I've just hit right mouse click to reset that, so I can just roll around and inspect what I've done here. Just having a look at some of the uh, different angles and, and cuts there. And again, because this is history based, if I click on this object, all our wi widgets become visible. So we can use each widget to make some changes. So, for example, this cut here, if I wanted to make that a little bit bigger, I can stretch that up. And it will make every cut through the tower a little bit bigger for us. So we can make those changes quite rapidly. And just to finish this off, what we might do is give it a bit of meaning, i.e. we might call this something. So let's say, for example, um, I want to call it concrete. Uh, I can attach some properties to this and also change the look and feel of this from being pink to concrete. Now, I could go ahead and create my own what we call catalog type in here, it could be called facade, panel, or something like that, but just for this, we'll just, we'll just call it a slab. Um, and I might just choose a concrete slab there, and if I click on the object, then uh, information properties will be applied to this object, and the look and feel of the object will change as well. So now it's, it's very much a, a concrete object. Um, and if I turned my perspective off, uh, which is this one here, and then um, went to a top view, and just popped a, a little um, section through this, choose say an arc typical section, and run that through to there. Uh, we can have it create a drawing model, we can just create the section itself. Then I can apply that section I spin around, we can see we have the section, we have concrete patterning in the middle there, um, and I could just go and adjust a few of these, a few of these display styles to to have this looking how I want it to look. So in our display styles dialog, I may turn allow illustration to be used in clip volumes. So okay, so we'll just come back to to our view attributes here. And what we might do is make that illustration in the forward view, cut drawing black in the uh, middle view, and just change the whole overall what view to, to wireframe. And you can see there that we have um, some uh, cut patterns and some rendering in the forward view there.